Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. This is the blackest man on social media. Sign a black in and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because that's the message is more important than the messenger. Shukran jazlan, jazakallah. Mabrook ya Ahmed. Um, earlier today I posted something. Um, I posted on uh, Black Junction under my own personal account, not Blackheart. And uh, I had this meme up where they show T.I. with his stepdaughter. Ironically, it's a stepdaughter. He's protecting her virginity. And then they show uh, D. Wade with his son uh, who's transitioning into Zaya. From Zion to Zaya. And the meme said uh, that, he, you know, T.I. got attacked for being a concerned dad and D. Wade is being celebrated for letting his uh, son become a daughter um, and a black masculinity is under attack and I recorded I mean I wrote on above it I wouldn't have done what T.I. did despite me being a Muslim I wouldn't have done it but I do want you to understand that black masculinity is under attack when I said this a Muslima commented well black what kind of masculinity are you talking about being under attack you live over there where women are oppressed okay see while I live, women are not more oppressed than men. Both of them kind of get oppressed to a certain extent. Everybody has it at some point. Because you see, the men don't have it easy and the women don't have it easy, but it's getting easier for the women and not for the men. Jobs are becoming scarce for the men, more and more. Foreigners, though, sometimes get oppressed when they get into traffic disputes with a citizen. Citizens are always right in that case. So nobody has it easy all the time. It's better than in the States, though. I'm telling you about this because um, this is a case where a lady has believed what white folks tell her about a region of the world in which she would be safer as a black woman and as a Muslim. She has believed what they say. And uh, she has not even asked anybody that lives over here. Now, granted, if you live over here, there's certain things you may not be able to say, but I'm free to say it as a citizen of a foreign land. I'm not likely to just be uh, taken uh, to some black site. I'm more likely to be deported. So that being said, I want you guys to realize that there is no place in the West where uh, th that is generally safe. Not even the Muslim community is safe from the brainwashing. The men's minds in the Muslim community are more safe from the brainwashing than the women's minds are. I'm saying to you, Muslim men that are black, get the hell up out the West. Because it's, it's already in your communities. Your daughter's mind's already gone. Your, uh, that's if you had daughters. Your wives already have certain things they would not be able to tolerate if they lived in a different environment, not even because of oppression, but simply because of uh, having to actually earn their bread. Either they work as hard as men do to get the same stuff, or they listen to a man and, and, and share it with him. One or the other. They can't tolerate that choice, that dichotomy. They insist on bringing hypergamy and feminism to the table and you tolerating it. And you trying to satisfy both. They insist in, uh, on that. Assalamu alaikum. They insist on it. They cannot uh, sit up and say, okay, I'm going to take one and not the other and not demand the other. Or I'm going to take the other and not demand the one. They are demanding both and you're stuck in that. You're in that crossfire if you're not one of the lucky few men. Most men don't hit that lottery where they get to avoid one or the other. Most of you are subjected to both. Get out. Now, for you, if you're Muslim, this was already hijra. I mean, our faith already tells you to make hijra, uh, to, to perform hijra to locations that are easier for you to practice your religion in. And half of your religion is in getting married. If you can do it. Now, if you just couldn't, it ain't your fault. But if you can, 
then you go to where you can be the best husband. And you cannot even be good of enough of a husband in these Western environments because they are designed to where nothing you do will be good enough. You'll never be able to fly without engines and wings. You'll never be bulletproof. You'll never be invincible. And you will always be subject to uh, more harmful effects from things other than kryptonite. Because you're human. That's how God made you. And, and that's always going to be too bad. Let me stop and think about that for a minute. I've left and I'm, I'll never be good enough even to the, uh, the mothers of my children, not because I'm not trying, but just even, even as a dad, because I live over here, they're not willing to send their kids abroad, but then I'm not a good dad because I'm not over there and that's not where my bread and butter is anyway. And that's after having left and that's without hatred and uh, uh, all of the mess that others go through. You're just, it's designed for you to never be enough ever at any point so and understand yeah your masculinity is under attack it's, many of you already know this but you don't know what is the solution it ain't college bro not unless that degree is, is going to be good for you even elsewhere it ain't college that's not going to be the answer a degree counts against you if you don't have it but it never counts for you if you have it so why even go and get it I mean, it's like looking hella nice for these women trying to go and attract them at the club, which many of you may have done when you were not Muslim, if, if you ever were not Muslim. What did you do? You shower. And you put on nice colognes and nice threads and you go to the club and you stand out there in the humidity or in the cold trying to get into the club watching a bunch of uh, stank behind women that didn't do the same thing that you did to prepare walk into the club. With that sour smell coming from their scalp because they got a weave on, walk right past you, go into the club, not even pay nothing. Not even get searched. You got to sit there and wait. By the time you get in, half the time's already gone. You got to buy drinks, and you done, you done done all of this. You get in there and don't get approached by one that looks any good. Even if you are outnumbered by them, they wouldn't do it. That game is vicious, man. And when you start to, to say this, understand you're not necessarily going to get support even from the sisters in the community. They're going to be those who will, but they're going to be a lot who won't. And believe you me, look at how they look. Check the face, facial beauty in comparison to them being against this stuff. And you're just going to find that a lot of them are going to be right. They're going to be ready to go along with that program. And that now they may not say, well, I think it's great that Zion's becoming Zion dads on board. But what they may say is, well, who are we to judge? They'll come with that stuff. That's a that's a warning sign right there. What do you mean? Who are we to judge? It's on the national news. That's so we have everything we need to make the judgment. We judge based on what we know, if it's open and obvious, we don't have to speculate about the unseen. But what's out open, obvious and seen, we judge. And they're going to say to you. Who are we to judge? That means why don't you shut up about that and worry about yourself? Okay, all right. But see, if you were to sit up and say that you don't have an opinion about it, then they would say you're not really a man. So you are already in the West. You cannot win with them. Bounce on them. Leave the Western Habiba. She ain't ready. If she is ready, she would be trying to leave already. Matter of fact, you know what you do? You simply tell the community that your goal is to save up a certain amount and then to get out of the country. That you plan on performing Hydra when you've got enough to do it and you know which place uh, is good for you. And you know what will happen? Chances are some of these dads may come to you. Listen, I understand you're ready to leave or you, you're trying to leave. Yes, you believe in Hydra, that's good. Are you married? No. All right. I'm looking for somebody for my daughter. That actually, that's more likely to happen to you if you just openly tell the people in the community that your plan is to save and get out. You got more of a chance of that uh, and finding someone on board with you by openly stating it than you do um, looking for someone there. It's just not going to happen. Honestly, you are at a point now, those of you in these Western communities trying to be Muslim, you are at a point now where... Uh, Marrying one of them is oftentimes even worse than tricking. Now, we don't believe in tricking. 
that's pretty bad. And marrying one of them can actually be worse for you in the long run than tricking. Because of what we know. They're going to come at you with that mess. Because they're still not ready to follow you. They took Shahada. You know what they're not ready to do? Listen to you. It's not your fault. You were born into the situation. They were born into the brainwashing. But they ain't ready to listen to you. They still got that condition in their mind. You are a black man and now you're Muslim. And the discrimination that you're going to face is not anybody's fault but yours. So your best bet is to go ahead and lead the way. You know, instead of waiting on everybody else, uh, you go ahead and lead the S S Y S B M way, actually, and bounce ahead of everyone else. Other cats at S Y S B M go somewhere, let them find you there. Man, how come y'all always here first? Well, you know, Hitchin is already an obligation for us anyway, man. I hope that one day what I've said ain't true no more, but in the meantime, I hope it helps. The blackest man on social media, sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.